Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Paris where the sun has come out so I thought I'd hop out onto the balcony and talk about England's team selection for the third fourth place playoff against Argentina this weekend. That came out earlier this afternoon and you can have your say in the comments section but it's a bit of a mix really from Steve Borthwick. The question really coming into the game was what do England do? Do you give a number of players that kind of farewell opportunity, those guys that aren't going to play for their nation again or probably won't play for their nation again? Or do you mix it up? Do you bring in some of the younger players or some of the fringe players on the edge of that squad that haven't had as much game time? And the truth is, it is a bit of a mixed bag, I think, from Steve Borthwick. I'll get into the bones of it in just a minute. There are some really interesting selections. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. But what do you all make of the third, fourth place playoff, first of all? Because it's an odd game, isn't it? I feel sorry for the players and for the coaches and having just lost in a semi-final, particularly the semi-final that England were involved in, where it's a heartbreaking one-point loss to then have to get yourself back up for it and to play a match the following weekend where there's not really anything riding on it. I don't think anyone particularly cares who comes third or who comes fourth in a World Cup. We know it's kind of mainly there because it's another game at the Stade de France, so it's more tickets sold and it's another game for TV, etc., etc. Or as England fans or as fans of Argentina, are you looking at it and you're glad you get to see your nation one more time? It's another game for you to get your teeth into. What I will say is even though the game in itself doesn't particularly matter. For England, to me, it feels like it's important for them to keep winning. In that, if they win against Argentina, people will probably say, well, Argentina haven't been great. It's a win for England, well done. But if they lose to Argentina, all of a sudden, I think the narrative around their World Cup maybe changes slightly. I don't know, am I putting too much of an emphasis on the result of this game? To me, with England, it feels like after their performance in that semi-final, that they need to keep winning. They need to keep playing well to keep building momentum and keep the, the faith that was maybe put back into that team after the semi-final performance. So it's a funny one. In terms of the game itself, I don't care if England come third or fourth in a World Cup. In terms of momentum, in terms of keeping winning, in terms of positivity around the team, which I think they have generated despite defeat to South Africa, that's why for me it feels important. But you can have your say. This is the team anyway. And as I say, it's a real mix of players that played in the semi-final and those that have come back in. So let's work our way through it. Eight changes in total, by the way. A new front row, Ellis Genge, Theo Dan and Will Stewart. In particular, I think in the case of Theo Dan, England need more minutes into the legs and experience of those that are behind Jamie George. I know Luke Cowan-Dickey will come back in because he's been injured for this World Cup, he would have been the backup. But Jamie George has had to shoulder a lot of the minutes, a lot of the responsibility at hooker. So Theo Dan coming in makes sense. Jamie George is on the bench. It will be quite interesting to see how much time they give Theo Dan. Are they going to try and give him 70, 75 minutes, really make him work in this game? Or will Jamie George come on earlier? And as I say, the change in the front row, you look at what the forwards had to go through against the box, then frankly the players that are still selected from that game in Ben Earl, Tom Curry and Maratoje that are still starting is, is quite frankly incredible. So Chesham comes in along Atoje having been on the bench against the box. Tom Curry plays, Sam Underhill comes back in, his first appearance for England since the second test against Australia in 2022. He has had a lot of injuries, Sam Underhill. But do you know what? When I look at particularly someone like Courtney Laws retiring, we'll get on to him in just a second. Having someone like Sam Underhill come back in and be fit is great for England. I think they have good options anyway in that back row. But yeah, I'm pleased to see Sam Underhill in there. Tom Curry and Ben Earl, who's been England's player of the World Cup so far. Ben Youngs gets his swan song. So it has been announced that he's going to retire from international rugby after the World Cup, which I think we all suspected anyway but he gets this final appearance. And in terms of those players like Youngs, Danny Kerr, Joe Marler, Courtney Laws, I would imagine they've been given the option in this game, providing they are in a place mentally and physically where they feel they can play again six days later or whatever it is, then I would have thought that they would have maybe been given the option. And I've got no issue with those that, if that is the case, decided, you know what, I'm fine having that game against South Africa as my final game for England, particularly 
for a Courtney Laws. Someone said to me the other day, do you think they'd not rather go out on a victory? Which could be the case, but equally, I think I could understand why you would rather go out in a World Cup semi-final, even though it's a defeat, rather than having to play in a third, fourth place playoff. But Ben Youngs will get that swan song and he has been brilliant for England. I think he, there is an argument to be made that he has been selected a little bit too long. And I think we've probably seen that this World Cup in the fact that when it's boiled down to it, it hasn't been Ben Youngs who's been part of the match day 23. But having said that, there is no questioning he has had an unbelievable England career. The longevity of it, the quality of it as well. I think because he's been going so long, you forget how good Ben Youngs was when he broke through the pace he had. And he was just a superb servant to England. So he deserves that opportunity to bow out. Owen Farrell then at 10. You've got two Alangi and Marchant again in the centres. Marcus Smith comes into the back three. Freddie Stewart moves on to the wing. Smith is at full back and it's Henry Arundel on the other wing as well. I think we'll see a lot of interchanging between Freddie Stewart and between Marcus Smith. How those two operate together, I think, will be quite fascinating. You've still got the aerial prowess of Freddie Stewart with the attacking capabilities of Marcus Smith as well. Uh, and then the bench, Jamie George, Bevan Rod, Dan Cole, Dave Ribbons, Lewis Ludlam, Danny Kerr, George Ford, Ollie Lawrence. So Danny Kerr could be his last appearance. Dan Cole could be his last appearance as well. We suspect that well, we know that Courtney Laws is retiring. Johnny May isn't expecting to play for England again. Joe Marler, I don't think will go too much longer either. So it is a changing of the guard in a way, but perhaps not so much as many of us would have expected. I think it is a team that Steve Borthwick has selected to go out and win that game. They're not taking it completely for granted. And I think there are interesting things in there. I think what's going to be fascinating for England going forward is what happens when it comes to the Six Nations at the start of next year? How much overhaul is there in that squad? Because I think you've got to be really careful. I don't think it is a case of simply chucking the kids at it or chucking a load of players in that aren't very experienced. You always have to balance it between players that are experienced and players that are earning their international stripes. This team kind of speaks to that a little bit to me. But what do you reckon? Have your say in the comments. Tributes to Ben Youngs, Marcus Smith at 15, Freddie Stewart on the wing. Is Freddie Stewart a long-term option on the wing for England? I suspect not, but they do clearly like the idea of Marcus Smith at 15. He doesn't seem to be in the plans at fly half at the moment. Um, and what do you make of the third, fourth place playoff? One of the weirdest games in world rugby, but we know why it's there. How important is it? I think it's important that England win. I don't care whether they come third or fourth, but I do care that they win and I do care that they keep winning. So you can have your say in the comments. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.